Try of the day. No warm up wearing jeans. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me what workouts I've been doing to increase my vertical, or more specifically, what you should be doing when you're starting off as a beginner. I think a lot of the time, the confusion that comes from beginners or even some intermediates stem from not knowing their limiting factor. Now, what is a limiting factor, you may ask? Well, based on the definition from Wikipedia, a limiting factor is a variable of a system that, if subject to a small change, can cause a noticeable change in the output or the measure of a type of the system. Now in our case, the output is the vertical jump and the variable that changes can range from technique to strength and other variables. If you ever wondered why you aren't seeing any noticeable changes or improvements for your vertical after putting consistent hours into the gym, it may just be because of a limiting factor. By isolating and realizing your limiting factor, you can now train smarter and more methodically. And most importantly, you will start seeing gains that you weren't able to see before. So in this video, I'd like to talk about the four main limiting factors you currently may be facing in improving your vertical jump. After watching this video, ideally, you should be able to pinpoint your weaknesses and start training more methodically around your limiting factor, hopefully seeing a noticeable change in your jump. This is also directed towards beginners and intermediates. If you're an advanced jumper with a vertical around 40 inches or more, at this point, you may just be experiencing diminishing returns from training. Okay, and it probably won't be your technique that will fix your jump. <laughs> the first and likely culprit as the limiting factor to your vertical jump is your jump technique. For most beginners that are just getting into jumping, technique is the limiting factor. One easy observation to make is just observe yourself jumping. A lot of the times, people know intuitively what an efficient jump looks like. Are you jumping like this or this? And it's likely the case that after focusing on improving your technique, you will observe a significant increase in your vertical jump. Some even might see an improvement of up to six inches or more. And in rare cases, for people who generally have a good form, making a small change may have been the missing piece in getting to the next level. When relating this to my jump, although I'm not a beginner or novice, I can see some minor tweaks or improvements I can make to help me gain a few inches of vertical. One of the improvements I can make to my technique is lengthening and speeding up my penultimate step. I can also reduce the stutter steps I sometimes make when I approach a jump. This is why it's crucial to spot weaknesses or faults in your jump technique as minor tweaks can help you gain so much. But for people who are advanced jumpers and have mastered their technique, it is likely that their next limiting factor is their strength. After you get comfortable and master your technique, it is likely that strength is your limiting factor. A great way to test if strength is your limiting factor is to check if you are able to lift 1.5 times your body weight. It is important to note that it is not your absolute strength that you should be focusing on, but your relative strength. Relative strength is basically how much you can lift relative to your body weight. You can be a dude that is 250 pounds and can squat 500 pounds, at the same time be 150 pounds and squat 400 pounds. And based on simple math, the smaller dude is lifting much more relative to his body weight. This makes sense because you don't usually see a strongman jumping high compared to the lighter athletic dude. In general, for intermediates and advanced jumpers, you would see the most gain in improving your vertical through strength. Strength is where you will see yourself getting the last bit of vertical you can get, with diminishing returns kicking in at this stage. The next limiting factor is speed. Speed is probably the most important variable that is the least appreciated and focused on. Most beginners make the mistake of solely focusing on strength while missing the second half, which is speed. Speed can be the limiting factor to increasing your vertical because you may not be producing the required force in a given amount of time. You can combat this by incorporating a healthy amount of time and plyometrics. 
Plyometrics can help increase your speed by priming your CNS or your central nervous system to respond quicker. So essentially, it helps with the reactivity of muscles alongside with speed. But just being fast will not help you increase your vertical. When talking about the vertical jump, speed is very interconnected with strength, or notably how quick you can produce force. This is pretty much power. And to improve your force production, you must also work on the speed at which you lift. For example, for squats, not just focusing on the quality of your reps, but also moving and exploding quickly enough into your concentric phase. Or working on cleans, which is the perfect lift when trying to improve your rate of force production. A lot of the times it's self-evident. If you're too big, you're going to be slow, which leads to our next limiting factor of body fat percentage. Bottom line, or to put it bluntly, if you're fat, you're not going to be jumping. Technique and body fat percentage should be the first limiting factor you should be worried about. Lowering your body fat percentage while maintaining your strength should be your top priority. There's a reason why the top 10 highest jumpers in the league have the lowest body fat percentage. Also, pro dunkers like Jordan Kilgannon, Isaiah Rivera, and Remix have body fat percentages in the ranges of 7-12%. to other than getting stronger while maintaining your weight, the only method you can increase your relative strength is to lower your body fat percentage. An important lesson that comes out of this is that when you're training to jump higher, it's crucial that you know what your training goal is. Improving your strength and speed while maintaining your weight is your goal, and not anything else such as size or hypertrophy. Ever wonder why big bodybuilders or strong men don't jump out of this world? It's because their training goals are vastly different from us. They focus on aesthetics and trying to get quote unquote big. Of course, there are athletes like Zion Williamson, but this is because they're an exception and a freak of nature. So unless you're Zion Williamson, LeBron James, or a freak of nature, I would worry about the limiting factors and focus on what you can actually change to help increase your vertical jump. To reiterate and summarize the whole video, the top 4 common limiting factors for your vertical jump that you should consider are technique, strength, speed, and body fat percentage or composition. Before I end off the video guys, I just wanted to say that I am by no means an expert in the topic of the vertical jump, or nor am I in the top echelon of jumpers, but I believe I'm well versed in this topic throughout the years of practicing and researching about the vertical jump. If you think I made any factually incorrect statements in the video, just let me know. I want to learn more as I'm also trying to improve my vertical jump. If you guys like the video and learned something new or have any input, please like the video and comment below.